It's one of the busiest weeks of the year for the Royal Mail, so they've got a new recruit at the sorting office in Stockport. Morning, Steph. Morning. Good morning to you. Morning, everybody. Yes, I'm here in the delivery office where you can see all the letters that are being sorted here this morning. This is uh, one of the new machines. That's just a year old that they've had brought in to help them to make things a bit quicker for them. We can talk now to AD Fielding, who's the operations director. Morning. So morning to you. Thanks for letting us in this morning. Um, just tell us a bit about what difference this machinery has made to your business. Well, these machines can sort items up to about 40,000 an hour, and they actually sequence mail, which makes it more easy for the postman and the postwoman to sort when it gets to the frame so we become more efficient yeah. and this time of year obviously the busiest for you I mean what do you do to prepare for it oh we have lots of operational contingency in place for Christmas uh, we employ more people in the mail centres obviously uh, we put extra collections in particularly over the weekends we open up uh, our callers offices where people come to collect parcels for longer opening hours to give the customer the best possible service yeah. Good luck getting it all sorted, and thanks Thank very much for your Thank time you. this morning. Now, Royal Mail is a company that's had uh, a tough couple of years. If you look at how many items they've been delivering, in 2006, they delivered around 80 million items every day. Now, at the figures, around 58 million. And it's that type of automation that hoping will make things a bit better for them. You can probably see here, this is the kind of older system of sorting it all out, which they're trying to get things moving more. And I've got a couple of guests experts on this with me this morning. I've got David Stubbs, first of all, postal, independent postal expert. Good morning to you, Hi. David. Hi. Tell us a bit about Royal Mail as a business, because it has had a tough time, hasn't it? It's had a very tough time, but it's starting to make money again. It reported profits of over 200 million this year, and it's starting to get viable, but it's still got a lot to do before it's going to be attractive for a potential buyer. Mm -hmm. And where are we in this privatisation process? Because it's been talked about for a long time, hasn't it? It's been talked about for a long, long time. We're still not really at the end of the process. We're getting mixed messages. Moya Green, the chief executive of Royal Mail, is saying that it may be next year if conditions are right. But it seems the actual date seems to have dropped out of ministerial announcements, so it may be after the next election. What difference will it make to customers and workers if it is privatised? I think it'll make a difference for customers because a private raw mail hopefully will be a little bit more customer responsive than sometimes raw mail has been in the past, a little bit more aggressive in its pricing and its, the way it deals with the competition. For the workers though it may be also much more aggressive in the way that it cuts its costs. So we might see job losses? We might see much more extensive and rapid job losses and also changes in the working conditions, more part-time working more mail centres closing down, sorting offices closing down, a little bit more precarious for the workers generally. Make a big difference. Well, thanks for your time, David. Also with me, I've got uh, Sharon Little, who's Chief Executive of the Greetings Card Association. One of the big things is about people not sending as many letters as there were in the past, but Greetings Cards is an industry that's still growing. Greeting cards are growing uh, and now form a major part of social mail for Royal Mail. Um, we've seen a, a, an increase, it's up to £1.82 uh, billion pounds worth of greeting cards sold in the last year. So it isn't that people are sending emails and texts and video messages then and that's taking it over? They, they are sending all of those but they're also sending more greeting cards than ever. We're being a bit friendlier as well, I guess, if we're sending everything. Fantastic, yes. We, we love sending greeting cards in this country, and it is a uniquely British tradition. Um, the very first Christmas card that you showed earlier um, was, uh, was the start of uh, an amazing industry, an amazing Christmas card industry and greeting card industry. Okay, well, thank you very much thank for your you. time this morning. And, Bill, I've got a bit of news for you. Oh, yeah. I found your Christmas present. Come and have a look at this while right. I was wandering round. Come on. I found it. <laughs> there you go. Small things. Is it really addressed to me? I'll bring that back to you. Okay. <laughs> Small but perfectly formed. Yeah. <laughs> Steph, thank you. Why See do you I later. Feel, why do I feel worried now? I don't <laughs> you know. need to worry. Amen.